Because the same Sunday, I can see the Republican President, Mr. Mike Ruchi of Chapapa Tosata, laying wreaths at Independence Stadium, at the graves of those foreign heroes into the Gabonese Sea Coast. Remember Zambians, you have made us proud. You have partially wiped away our tears to whatever happened in 1993. And here is a touching message as you are heading to the, to the World Cup. I need to inform the whole world that Zambians are now coming here. Many thanks to the Vuvuzela boys for boosting the morale for the, our national side. there where you are performing from so it's sports hub it's a new program on tv3 channel 004 on top star welcome to it and happy africa freedom day my name is modern singala so this is the program where we'll be bringing you different sports personalities and also artists that do uh sports songs so what do we have on the program i have um well four great people so the first one is one j he's the one who is doing performances for us uh, he's famous for the song Vuvuzela. He released it in 2011 uh, when he sang for the Chipolo Polo. And, um, well, coincidentally, the following year, the Chipolo Polo won the 2012 um, AFCON trophy. So we'll be able to talk to him uh, later on. Let me introduce also other people on the guest. We have Sydney Siame, who is Zambia's number one sprinter. And he's heading for the Olympics. And there he is. Sydney Siame, so just standing next to 1J, yes, so wait for it so that you hear the story from uh, Sydney Siame. Apart from Sydney Siame, we also have Rhoda Njovu, she recently qualified for uh, the Olympic Games, she's also heading for the Olympic Games, Rhoda, 27 years of age and also representing Green Eagles Athletics Club. Last but not least, we have Muvanga Kunda. She is uh, the number one table tennis player uh, among the females. Uh, she's only 21 years of age and she's already number one. So these are the guests we have for today. So for Sydney and uh, Rhoda, you can come and take a seat here. And uh, for Muvanga and uh, 1J, I'll call on you uh, later on. So lady and... Uh, Gentlemen, welcome to Sports Hub. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, we would want to hear their stories. What stories do they have? Where are they uh, coming from? So uh, let me start with uh, Sydney. Uh, Sydney, we know uh, you came to the limelight in 2014 when you won a gold medal at the Nanjing Oli uh, Youth Olympic uh, Games. First of all, run us through where you are coming from uh, with your athletics career. Uh, when and how did you start? Uh, I started in uh, 2013, late 2013, uh, and picked up in 2014. And from then, uh, from there, I've been uh, doing athletics here at home, and uh, I'm still doing it. And I've won a couple of uh, medals, and I've competed uh, in a couple of competitions, and uh, I've represented the country in so many competitions. So uh, I've been in athletics for almost uh, seven years now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's it, athletics uh, in general, it's, uh, it's a good thing to do it and uh, it feels wonderful to, to represent your country. So uh, it has been amazing. Okay, so how did you discover your talent? Because anyone can run, but to be competitive is difficult. How did you <laughs> discover <laughs> your talent? Yeah, I f at first I didn't know. It started like a joke when I was at school uh, in Chingora. So we had uh, interhouses. Uh, I participated in, the, in, the, in that and I won it. I proceeded to inter schools. I won the inter schools and uh, I was chosen to be in the district team. Again, I won the district team. So everything just started flowing. I also featured in a uh, 
in the in the interprovincial team and i won it again so that's that's how i discovered it and uh, uh i joined a, a club in chingola um, Chang athletics club uh, that's where i started training and uh, by then i didn't compete to any international then uh, to to compete with uh with with the elite and uh, and the professional athletes i was just training there as a young as a as a young boy so i i featured in one of the hokamas meet in uh, 2014 i did very well i think i came second from the guy who was who was uh, on the limelight and he was already competing internationally so i came second and i was chosen and i qualified to to the world youth uh uh-uh, not i mean not world youth uh Africa Youth Games in Botswana. Mm. Uh, I went there and I managed to win a, a, a silver medal at youth category. Whereas I was there, I, I even qualified for the World Junior and uh, and uh, and the Youth Olympic Games, which was in uh, in Nanjing. Okay, all right. Now uh, run us through the 2014. You said you started in 2013. Then in 2014, you even went on to to win a gold medal. How easy was that for you? Yeah, it uh, it just happened like that. I didn't know because for 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 f- in athletics you need to take time and uh, you have to be in, uh, in the game for 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 a long time to 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 start winning medals and uh, winning something for the nation. But for me, it started like that. You know, when it's your time, you can even move the mountain. So for me, it was uh, easy like that. I I can say it was easy, but although it was not easy because everything happened. Yeah. Maybe I was just braced by then, <laughs> and uh, I was lucky because I found people who are who are very uh, who have got talent, who have got uh, experience in athletics. Mm. Uh, one of them was my coach, Coach Douglas Kalembo. Oh, he's wow. been he's been in athletics. So he's the one who discovered you. Uh he's, he's not the one who discovered me, but he's the one who natured me to win that medal. That's what I I can say because I was in. Uh, in uh, in Chingora when I was not uh, competing internationally but when I came to Lusaka I was coached by him so he's the one who natured me and I went there to win the medal and up to now I'm still with him so all the medals that I've won I've been with him I've never I've only worked with uh, with uh, with him for for seven years and we've managed to win so many medals so so he's been, he's been experienced and uh, is the coach that can take you there if you if you follow him very well so uh i was just lucky because he's been there and uh, he knows what it takes for someone to win a medal and for him to 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 to, to make me win that medal it was easy for him because he's been handling seniors and for for him to handle juniors and uh, youth it, it became easy for him so that's how i was lucky and i, okay. I managed to win it Okay, so we'll be seeing some of your visuals on how you've been performing at various levels because uh, some of the major events that you've won, obviously the um, gold medal at the Youth Olympic Games, also a gold medal at the All-Africa Games. So we'll be seeing some of the visuals on how you performed. But let me come to Rhoda. Give us your story as well. How did you start? Honestly, I started uh, as a joke because I never took athletics so serious. I just took it as a game because it was something that uh, wasn't looking so promising for me. Uh, I started athletics way back in 2007, somewhere there, when I was 12 years old. Mm. I started doing athletics at church when I was at Anglican, Congrega- Anglican Church in Kaunda Square, Stage 2. That's when I started my career. From there, I took it up. Uh, there was a time when I used to, after I discovered it, there was a time I started participating in inter-schools, though it wasn't looking so promising for me because I wasn't the best athlete, to be honest. With time, I developed interest. There was a, a certain man who was so interested and he saw a talent in me by the name of uh, Mushiri, uh, who is my, my producer. I call him producer. From there, he took me from that level. And, and that's you there. That's at uh, National Hero Stadium. Sure. And all those challenging you, Lumeka Katundu, and uh, and other athletes, Suilanjim Pondela also there. Oh, How yeah. can you describe that one? <laughs> it, it hasn't been an easy thing. It took uh, patience, hard working for me to reach where I am. 
for me, my story is different from Sydney. As, we have, as we've heard, Sydney, he just came into athletics and he was able to scoop medals and he was able to put up a good performance. But for me, I, I had to, to pass through the development and uh, the grassroots, after grassroots, all that. After my, my grade 12, that's when I came back into serious athletics. That's when I had to, that's when I started performing on the international level. I, I represented Zambia uh, at African Championship where I didn't manage to win any medal. But for me, I really trusted the process and I had patience within myself to say that one day the things that I really love to do, I'll be able to achieve. And honestly, it has now reached me this far. And I'm so grateful to the people who have been so supportive. In 2013, I managed to, to meet Coach Douglas and he started training me from there. Uh, by that time, my producer was like, uh, he can't continue training the athletes. That's when I was, uh, that's when I was took to OIDC. Mm -hmm. That's when I went, I joined ZNS from there and up to now. now. Okay. Why do you think it took long for you to blossom? I feel like uh, it's the, because for athletics, for someone to develop, because as for me, I started athletics at the very early stage. By then, I was 12 years old when I started athletics. It was, ne it was not something which was serious. I was just enjoying myself and learning a lot in athletics. And to have reached now where I'm 27 years, that's when I'm picking up. Like even my coach, Douglas Karembo, has been explaining it. It took seven or 10 years for an athlete to be well matured or to be to reach on the good quality of performance hmm. and i've seen that that's the process that has been that's what i've been going through okay so what's your personal best time my personal best time in 100 meters as it stands currently um, um i did 11 12 which my, which helped me to qualify for the olympics and i came back in 200 meters i also qualified for the olympics which i give glory to god and the people have been sponsoring me because it hasn't been an easy journey. I'm so grateful to my family. They've never lost any hope. And uh, the, my many sponsors, ZN, ZNS, which I'm so grateful from, for the sports director and uh, everything, especially the command, the commandant who has been giving me great support. Whenever my association write for a letter for me to be released, they normally do that. I'm so grateful to them. And uh, the many sponsors, the uh, PP program and NOCZ. I'm so grateful to them because they've helped me to start performing the way I'm performing right now. Okay. Shortly we'll be seeing your photos on um, when you paused uh, again at that time of 11-12. I'm sure. Did you expect that, that we're going to hit 11-12 and qualify for the Olympics? To the look of things, I was expecting that because uh, my great performance started previous. It, it started uh, early last year. And I really had hope that I'll qualify for the for the Olympics, but fortunately we were hit we we were hit with COVID nineteen, whereby everything was just shattered, and uh, we had all sorts of uh, breakdown which was going on until I had to come back, and I managed to qualify. I really expected that because my coach and uh, the people have been supporting; they've been putting in the very best to see me qualify. Okay, mm. Sydney. Your personal best time is 9.87, isn't it, in, one, yeah. in 100 meters? Yes. Almost close to your send boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I remember when you hit that, uh, there was some controversy. Some, some people couldn't believe that, you, that that was really your time. How did that make you feel? Uh, I was just... Uh, I was okay because um, they they didn't know what 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 it means to to learn to learn that fast because me and my coach we we believed and uh, we we did it so uh, it's never easy and uh, everyone cannot cannot accept it like that because it it has never happened in Zambia so and uh, it was a national record when they say national record it means nobody has done it in the country it's only you have done it. Can you remember that race? Yeah, yeah. I can remember it. It was in Botswana, Gaboloni International Meet. Mm -hmm. I think 2019. Ah, 2018. Yeah, 2018. Okay. And you came out first? Yes. For a medal? Yes. How easy was it? Uh, it wasn't easy because uh, that was my first international meet. And uh, I was facing a lot of challenges because for someone to pick, you need to do at least 
uh, four to five international meets, serious ones. That's when you peak, when you face serious competitions. So it wasn't easy. That was my first, and I was competing with people who have, who have competed before. So uh, I just used the experience, and uh, I used my willpower until I won the race. Okay, and that's also another one. Can you remember this one? That's all African Games. Gold medal. Yeah. yeah. In 100 meters. In 200, 200 meters. meters. Yes, Labat, Morocco. Hey, so really, uh, tell me the secret. What's the secret <laughs> to having straight, uh, uh, great strides <laughs> to train everyone? Yeah, it takes training. It takes, uh, you need to, to be consistent on training and know what you're doing, believe in yourself and follow the instructions. So it's just training. So that's our job and uh, we've been doing that for, for, for a long time. So it's, it's, a, it's part of me and it's, 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 it's the thing that I do every day. So it looks easy, but it's not easy for, 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 for someone who, who is not training. So uh, that's how we do it. Okay, but at the moment you are unable to reach that uh, 9.87 in, in 100 meters and also in 200 meters you are unable to reach uh, your personal best time. Uh, why is it so? Yeah, it's a PB. A PB, we call it a personal best. A personal best, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a certain time that you you set, an athlete sets. That's, that's the far, that, that's the fastest time we has an athlete has learned. So it's a personal base. For you to hit a personal base, it means you have worked extra hard. And uh, I can just give an example. It's not all the PBs that can be broken because it's, it's some, some of the PBs are, are faster, some of the PBs are slow. So, for example, I can give it to an Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt broke uh, a PB of 9.8. 9 he didn't even break it again. So that was his personal best. But I'm not saying I won't break my personal best. It takes time for 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 an athlete to break a PB. Again, mm. it takes uh, something serious for an athlete to, to break a PB. So when you're not running fast, you just have to to remain focused, know what you're doing and trust the process. Because in athletics, we don't work with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, you, you don't, you don't need to, 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 to be in panic for you to, to run. Cause you are, once you start running, what is you are, you are in panic, you won't do anything. Okay. What about this one? Can you remember it? I can see you are this in lane a... one, one, two, three, four. You're in lane four. Yes. I can remember it. Okay. Which one is this one? <laughs> This is uh, a <laughs> Cork, Cork International Meet in uh, Highland. Okay. Yes. All that right. was 2019. Okay. So does it matter which lane you are in, um, whether you are in lane 8 or lane 1? Yeah, sometimes it, it matters, but it, it, it also goes with experience. Once you are given a lane, you have to use your experience for you to come out well. Mm, okay. All right. All right. Um, let me come to you, Rhoda. Um, you'll be going for the Olympics for the very first time. What are your expectations? I'm expecting to perform my, my best performance there. Because looking at how I've been running, each and every time I hit the track, I always run the fastest time. I believe I still have room for me to go because it shows the consistency that I have. And that's you there, 11-12. Yes. Unbelievable. <laughs> so amazing. <laughs> yeah, okay. So fast. And and um, I'm sure you couldn't take it. Yeah, I can see you were so all emotional when you <laughs> so qualified true. for the Olympics. It was so emotional because it's something that it was a, a a dream coming into reality. It's something that I I was dreaming of it, but the time it happened, I couldn't believe it again. I was like, what's going on? What's happening? Is it me or maybe who did this? But it uh. Through, through hard working, I've seen that hard working pays. Mm, okay, mm. all right. So it's as serious. viewers at home, you can also take part on the program. You can just leave your comment. You go to Facebook and find ZNBC Today. Then leave your comment there and I'll be able to read right here, right now on this program. So I make sure you take part. Then later on, I'll give you a challenge. There's a photo that I'll show you. If you identify it, then send your answer to ZNBC today. If you get it right 
and then I have some goodies for you for next week's program uh, I'll give you uh, some goodies but we also have um, Mubanga Honda on the program she is Zambia's table tennis number one in the female category. Mwanga, how are you doing? I'm okay, thanks. How are you? Very well, thanks. Sure. All right. Um, so Mwanga will be our regular on the program. So uh, we'll hear from her on um, <coughs> who she is, uh, where she started from as well. But later on, she'll be giving us updates regarding what is happening in the sports world. Um, so Mwanga, I also want to hear from you. How did you start table tennis? And at the young age of 21, you're already number one in Zambia. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Um, being a champion is not as easy as uh, my colleagues just said right now. It takes consistency and also working so hard. Uh, my career started when I was in grade eight. I was at Simon Mwansaka Pwepwe, then I just got inspired. We were about the 30 of us. Then we went to Olympia Africa. We just went for fun there. We just went to play. And one of our teachers took us there. So then we had a very great experience there. Then my friends got inspired as well, but I got so inspired as well. I said, okay, we'll be going there just like that. My colleagues stopped, but then I kept on pushing. I kept on going there out of fun. So then that was in 2013. That was in April. Then from there, I started training from April, May, June, July. Then in August, I had to qualify to, uh, we, had a very, we had a tournament there. That was for the juniors in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. So I qualified there. So from then, I went that side. I got a gold medal. So it was so amazing for me. Out of that fun playing, and then I just got a gold medal. So it was so amazing for me. From there, I got so inspired. And then that's how I had to pursue my career. I said, no, I think I have to like follow this and then do it not out of fun anymore, but I think I have been caught in this area. So from that time in 2014, 2015, I traveled to after Dar es Salaam, I traveled to Botswana. From then my performance was not as good, but at least I tried, I came out number three. So from there I had so much passion to say, okay, I think I can now pursue and follow, continue training and also get good results. In 2016, I traveled to Namibia, so it was like a great, it was something so coincident. When I go, I couldn't come back empty-handed. I would come back with a gold medal, either maybe second or third. So that gave me so much zeal to train so hard, and that at the end of the day, I was declared as Zambia number one in the female category. Okay, so yeah. you've been outstanding for some time now. Of course, um, I have. <laughs> what has kept you going? Well, I think Sydney said about consistency. Also, you need to have endurance because basically, let me say, in Zambia, sport is never easy as uh, compared to other countries. So it's always been consistency. It's always been endurance. This, when you face some other challenges, you keep on enduring them. At the end of the day, you, in, you get good results. So I think consistency, hard work, like Rhoda said earlier, hard work, and also pursuing and knowing what you want exactly. I think that's the thing that has really kept me going until death. Okay. Yes. But do you have serious challenges? Are there any players you feel, mm, if I meet this player, mm, it's <laughs> so a tough match? <laughs> of course, there are some uh, insecurities that you face as a player. It's normal. There are some times that you travel and you feel like, okay, but I think this one, in as much as I may meet them, in my finals or maybe semi-finals you even know to say your mind your instincts are telling you to say okay i think this is not easy there are some races that you just play and say okay at the moment i think i'll pass but there are those uh segments that come where you feel like okay i really need to work so hard i have challenges i have one of them uh that's a piece of from botswana and also i have uh zodwa from uh, from south africa sorry you know, I when I, I meet this two, uh, at OIDC you lost to a Tanzanian. Yes, I've forgotten I, her name. That's Nema. Yes, Nema. Yes, yes she's yes. always been my challenger every time we meet because she uses a different uh, rubber that compared to what I use. So it's always been a challenge. So that that has actually taught me to come about how to come about some certain uh, tactics on how I can lead her and know how to win and know how I can come about it. It's never been easy, but we've all endured. And at the end of the day, we try to pursue and not to say, okay, I need to work hard. And at the end of the day, you end up doing better than before. All right. Yes. Um, Sydney, 
how are you preparing for the Olympics? Yeah, my preparation. I remember last time when you were at the Olympics, was it at the Olympics or World Championships, where you met Johan Blake? And I think you beat him. Uh, Johan Blake of uh, Jamaica. Yeah, that was 2017. 2017. London, yeah. Oh, at World the World Championships. Yes. Yes. Uh, so how are you preparing for the Olympics? Yeah, my preparation is going on very well. Uh, we are preparing very well. Everyone is uh, is involved. And uh, we are geared for, for the Olympics, I think. I'm just remaining with uh, one month. If I'm not mistaken, let me just say two months. Because uh, we have some few days ahead of us. If I combine very well, if I'm not mistaken. So everything is going on very well. But uh, I think I've challenge of uh, competition mm. I'm not having a, enough competition mm. um, of course locally I have but internationally I don't have competition because due due to 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 COVID because we are we are unable to get a visa to go to Europe because we usually go to Europe every season that's where we have a lot of competitions and serious competitions for you to get informed so it's a challenge for me because I'm not having that. So, but everything is going well according to 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 the way I'm training. I can train, I can train, but without competition, it it will become very difficult for me to 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 perform my level best. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sitting idle. I've put up my socks. So uh, I'll do everything as as a, as a, as we have primed with the coach and uh, everyone involved. So everything will be okay, I'm sure, because we are training very well and uh, the support we are receiving from the NOCZ, the Federation, from my club, from all, everyone, from all, all angles, we have support. So all we need is just to compete outside and see what we can do before the Olympics. What are you promising Zambians, uh, Sydney, when you go for the Olympics? Because for you, this will be the second time, right? Uh, this is my first Olympic game. Oh, it will be your first? Yeah. You've only been to the World senior, Championship? For the senior, yes, it's my first. Oh, okay, for the senior, yes, you've only been to the Youth Olympics. What's yeah. your target? Yeah, I think everyone's target, every athlete in the world, every athlete desires to perform better because there's no one who likes, who can like to go mm -hmm. there and uh, do come out first come mm. come out in the first round mm. it doesn't say okay at least if i it doesn't reach look good. the semi-finals or maybe if i reach the final what's your minimum minimal target uh okay i don't like promises <laughs> <laughs> i don't like promises uh especially on this one because mm. this is olympics guys mm. this is olympics it's not like a school competition or an interprovincial where we can wake up <laughs> Even without Oma and win the race, it takes at least something for you to go there. So uh, it's a serious competition, and we face a lot of world-class athletes. Everyone is geared for that. So for me to start promising to say I'll reach this, 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 I'll put myself in pressure, <laughs> of which I don't want any pressure. I want to be free. I want to compete in with a free mind and <laughs> know what I want in my heart without okay. telling anyone what I want. Okay. So it will show itself. Okay, yeah. let's hear from Rhoda. Rhoda, what's your target? My target is to, re is to reach in the finals because looking at the times that I'm running right now, because uh, it shows I'm so consistent and uh, that gives me so much hope. And looking at the times that uh, uh, professional athletes are running out there are just similar. So I feel like I can match them. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm promising to reach in the finals. Because when I make a promise, I feel it will give me a motivation for me to even work extra hard. So I'm promising to reach in the finals. And when I reach in the finals, who knows, anything can come out from there. Even the best athletes, because for them, they'll be running with the titles. But for me, I don't have any title. Who knows, anything can happen good out of there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Let, now, let me get what you guys do away from athletics. Um, Sydney, do you do anything else apart from athletics? Mm. Yeah, I do. Yes, what else do you do? Uh, I'm a police officer, stock and businessman. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's what I do. All right. So if you were to motivate someone to do um, athletics, would you say it's lucrative? Can someone get a life out of um, athletics? Yes, of course. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, athletics, it's a... Uh, is something that can change somebody's life because 
it has changed my life because everything that I have is through athletics. So um, it's something that somebody has to take it serious and uh, pay attention because it's, it's, it's really, it's a changing, it changes life. It changes lives because, uh, you know, in athletics there is, there is future because I got employed because of athletics. Mm. I was educated because of athletics. I'm able to live today because of athletics, so wow. I can encourage them to be serious and take athletics seriously because it's, 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 it's something that can do amazing in their lives. Okay, Rhoda, tell me what else you do apart from athletics. I'm a service personnel. I work for ZNES as a civilian. So uh -huh. out of that, I'm also an entrepreneur. I do my businesses, but as of now, I had to leave all my businesses for me to concentrate on athletics. So I feel like I don't have much time to do other things apart from athletics. This is the reason why I was even released from work to, to be attached to athletics. Mm, okay. Mwanga, uh, um, <laughs> table tennis. How lucrative is it? Uh, can you convince someone to join table tennis? Okay, table tennis is not a sport that is so common. But personally, me, as a, I found myself playing table tennis. Here in Zambia, it's not as common compared to football or like my, my colleagues who play uh, athletics. At least them, it's quite known. And somebody would know about it, even without explaining. But table tennis, you really have to go into details. So the botanist in Zambia is not really known, but we, the athletes that are there, and we that have found ourselves in that sport, we have to make it firm. So me personally, my goal is to make it known in Zambia. That's the reason why we try by all means, even when I go, I travel, I try to bring the name out. So at, at the end of the day, even without explaining, without so many explanations, somebody will be able to know to say, okay, there's table tennis also in Zambia. So I want it recognized. So I'm pushing so hard in as much as we are having challenges with COVID-19, like Sydney said, with our traveling and we've not been having competitions, but we are aiming so hard to make it known in Zambia and all over the world. Okay. Yes. What do you want to achieve in the near future? What's your main, main target? Okay, I'm really getting inspired right now with my colleagues who actually, uh, they are sparing me right now. Mm -hmm. My dream has always been to be, me being a national team captain, a national team player representing Zambia number one is not enough for me locally. So I want to aim so high. At the end of the day, I also get aspired in order to say, okay, I'll also travel and go beyond I know that, okay, one day, I was so happy to see Rhoda, I was just telling her earlier, I was so happy to see her qualify for the, uh, for the Olympics. You see, as a lady and also in Zambia, knowing where we are, it's not really easy. So I got so inspired one day, I said, okay, at the end of the day, if she's a lady and she can do this, in as much as we're not into same sport careers, but at the end of the day, I also have that aspiration to say, okay, I'll go far in life, I'll go far in this sporting career. So I also have the aspiration to go that far. Okay. Yes, yes, All course. right. Um, let me get a personal now. Uh, you guys, let me start with you, Rhoda. Are you a family person, married, kids, husband? No, as of now, I'm not a family person. Uh, I'm not married. I'm so single because looking at what I'm doing, I need that room for myself so that I can be able to be well independent and to, to achieve a lot of things in athletics. That's when I can start thinking of being a family person. Okay. Sydney? Yes. How yeah. many kids? No kid. Okay. Yeah. All right. But if you had kids, would you encourage them to do athletics? Yes. Maybe you'd want them to yes. go into boxing or football. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I can say is just that uh, we're born with different talents. Mm. So uh, if my kid can choose to play football or boxing, for me, it's just to support the kid and go further. Okay, Mwanga. Well, I, I'm not married. Yes, I'm not married. I'm still pursuing school and also working on other things, but I'm not yet married. Okay, so what are you yes. doing? What else are you doing apart from table tennis? Well, I'm working in a beauty spa. Uh, I'm a receptionist there, and also I'm working on my school career. I okay. want to do do IT. Mm. Yes, so we are looking forward next year to pursue in college or university by God's grace. Okay. Yes. Why did you pick on ICT? 
Well, I just got so inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I just got so inspired. Okay, uh, from the scratch, I've always been wanting to do something that concerns health. But then, as time goes by, I think I'm deciding to do IT because I think I'm getting so familiar with technology. Okay. Yes, so I think IT will be better for me at the moment. Okay, all right. Yes. So um, <laughs> for now, we'll be taking a musical break. Uh, so one J will be running us through one of the songs that he's done. He's done so many uh, songs for Chipolo Polo. So we'll get to another song of one J. This one with masterminds from Malawi and yes, That was uh, 1J. So he's uh, right here with us uh, performing 
Uh, one day, good to uh, see you and good to host you. Where have you been? Uh, I've been around. Mm. Yeah, I've been skunking, I've been pushing, I've been working hard just to make sure that things are moving in my life. Okay, people are asking me, why is one day? Apo ya fumina pe vuvuzela tatuwa mpapo ka karu mboka nyoan? The soccer fans have been following me. Uh, vuvuzela was released in uh, 2012 before the team uh, could go to, to, to AFCON. Thank God we won the AFCON and the uh, it's a national anthem in football. 2013, I released Murerere uh, uh, when he hosted uh, Kosafa in Indola, and we won that. 2017, I released the, the one I'm just from, we're just from playing here, to a for under 20, and we won the Africa Cup again. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been there. Interesting, interesting. Uh, so yes. what are your full names? My full names are Matthias Manda. I'm from Wapola. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. And we know you as 1J. Are you the one who sings that small voice? Who is that one? Uh, that one is my colleague. Uh, we are together in uh, Mimburu family. Uh, we are only chat by Mosegeta. What's so, his name? Shimba Boyd. Shimba Boyd. So people think he, he's the one who did this song, Buvuzela and, and the rest. Yeah, that's how it is. You know, Mimburu family, it's a, it's a big family. There is Chikaru Pupa from Mimburu, Wanje from Mimburu, Bank Bass from Mimburu, King David from Mimburu. And uh, it's a movement. Uh, we thank we thank Mozegeta for for his initiative and uh, for keeping us there. Okay, what has been keeping you going? You like uh, songs for Chipolo Polo and, and so forth. What has been inspiring you? What's the mo the motive behind? I'm coming from a family where uh, they are football lovers. My family loves football so much, and uh, dad used to play football at that level. But for me, I, I couldn't play football. But uh, God had invested something in me. And music is one, one of that thing that God has invested in me. So I, I took up and uh, I think my family and the country as large, they've supported me and I thank, I thank them for their support. It's not easy. Okay. Yes. All right. It's time for challenges now. Uh, but before the challenge, I would want to ask you, I remember earlier on I promised that I will show you a photo. If you identify that photo, the next, uh, next, on next week's program, uh, I'll bring some goodies if you get it right. So where to post your comment is on ZNBC today on Facebook. So the photo will be displayed shortly. You identify the person that uh, there we are. Who is that person? Uh, so this person um, was a sportsman, very well-known sportsman. So if you identify this person, uh, you post on Facebook, ZNBC today. If you identify the person, then next week you are assured you get at least something. So there you are. Uh, let's see how much you know Zambian sports. So it's time for challenges now. So I'm pairing these four guests that I have. So Roda will be paired against Muvanga and Sydney will be paired against 1J. So the first challenge is ball juggling. So um, Sydney and 1J, you can stand there. We see the skills. Since you are yeah. only used to <laughs> <laughs> athletics, <laughs> let's see well, how well you can do on ball juggling. You can Le pick on no, any ball. No, let's do stats. <laughs> <laughs> no. You come from the group. No. So pick on any ball. Which one are you going to choose? Uh, I think this one. The big one? Yeah. Okay, you can go. You can go ahead and do juggling. Bo ball juggling. Yes. You have three chances. If you waste your, those chances. Okay, you okay. How many? You have three chances. Do as many as possible. Hey! Pari talent up a pantry. Pari was killed up. Ah, wow! <laughs> okay. Uh, One J. For me, it's difficult to do the juggling because this, this, this boy itself here, uh -huh. Chelsea. Uh, they are the one who put it out from the champions. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Okay, use that. Use the small one. Use the small one. The, the smaller one again. <laughs> the smaller one again. It's not that okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so you've done is. Sydney. You've done 23 seconds. So it's your turn now, Anji. Can I do this one? It's difficult. <laughs> hey. Oh. Oh. 
Oh my one to in a skill. Eh, Forty. Timekeeper, how many seconds? <laughs> Forty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> So viewers, you are the judges, but uh, you are the judges. So one J has uh, picked this one. Um, so it's time for the ladies now. So gentlemen, you can step aside as we wait for the ladies and see how they will juggle the ball. Who's going first? Yes. Who is going first? <laughs> Who is going first? Go first. Okay, Mubanga, you are going first. Okay, you can choose we'll any ball the there. Okay. I'll use the one. The big one. A small uh, one? I'm trying to tap because I want to see who did much. The okay. smallest was uh, <laughs> yeah. the winning <laughs> goal. <laughs> I think I'll go. <laughs> okay. Maybe I can do much. Okay, and time starts now. Okay. <laughs> three. Oh my god. <laughs> Within oh three god. seconds, <laughs> it's a rudder's time. You're I going for the big one. Because of my. Okay, and time starts now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought who she would do it better because she's in the eye. Who, who is the winner? Timekeeper, you can help me. Who is the winner? It's Mubanga. Yeah. All right, so Mubanga has got in this one. Oh my okay, we would we'll now do arm wrestling. We don't know who is who has more strength. So Sydney and uh, 1J, you can go over there and do arm wrestling. Yeah. And uh, remember, we've already sanitized you so you are safe. Yeah, you are safe. We've already sanitized you. I'm restri. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Oh Sydney Siame, Zambia's <laughs> number one runner. Yeah, up against one J. Um, one. Let, let me say Zambia's yeah. number one yeah. Chipolo Polo singer. So mm. time starts now. On your marks. Yes, no cheating. So <laughs> under three seconds when I count. From three to one, then you start. So three, two, one, go. There we go. Who has more strength? <laughs> oh yeah. I uh, go to gym one every day. day. One day. <laughs> 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 I'm seeing that one coming for you. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, let's do the second one. Let's do the second one. We're oh remaining with few God. seconds. Ah, no, no, no. Ladies, you can go there. <laughs> I'm afraid no. Rod and Mwanga, we have very few seconds before we wind up. <laughs> I think I'm okay. getting this. Okay, on your mats. I know, I know. Get know. set. So, under three seconds. Three, two, one. Ah, mm. Rod, that's four start. <laughs> you started earlier before I could say go. I'm not I scared. I say go. Okay. So on your mats. Okay. On your mats. Three, two, one. Go. Ah, <laughs> move on, get a I always in the gym every day. I think God knew why you won the board. Okay, at least I won one. So, so now we can see um, the the um, the goodness of athletics and table tennis. But you use your your right hand every time, like this. Move on, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'll work on myself. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming through. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I had uh, Rod and Jovu, who is number one sprinter among the females, and she's going for the Olympics. I also had Mubanga Kunda, who is number one table tennis among the females in Zambia. Sydney Siame, number one sprinter among the males in Zambia, and is also going for the Olympics. And also, one J, who gave us lovely performance, he's done so many songs. For Chipolo Polo. And my name is Modern Sinkala. Remember to leave your comments on ZNBC today on Facebook. And uh, we'll see you next week. Enjoy your night. Goodbye. <laughs>